Hello, my name is Rodrigo Toledo and I'm going to present the paper entitled Designing Comparison of Two High Power Supply Rejection Capacitorless Low Dropout Regulators Using a Voltage Subtractor Stage. This paper has three authors, me, my colleague Wenta de Lima Silva and our professor Rafael de Souza Marinho. We belong to the Electrical Engineering Department from the Federal University of Paraíba. The contents of this presentation are Introduction, typical LDO regulators, power supply rejection, IPSR LDO regulators design, simulation results, and conclusion. One common solution for an efficient power management system is to integrate all necessary components into a system on chip solution, achieving high efficiency. In this figure, we can see a block diagram of a typical power management system used in system on chips. Due to its switch in nature, the DC-DC converter has high output ripple, as shown in this figure. In order to reduce the ripple, we need to use a linear regulator. Here, we use an LDO regulator that reduces the ripple. A circuit diagram of a typical LDO regulator is illustrated in this figure. The three main blocks are a PMOS transistor, also known as a pass transistor, an operation amplifier, here we call them error amplifier, and a feedback network, represented by those two resistors. Also in this figure, we have represent a reference voltage, usually provided by a band gap circuit. VDO is the dropout voltage, CO is, a, is an output capacitance, and the load is represented by the current source IL. In this equation, you can see how to set V out. To increase the efficiency, Observe that one can decrease the dropout voltage. The power supply rejection, or the PSR, is a specification of the LDO. It is analyzed in the frequency domain. The PSR is function of frequency and represents the small signal gain from V in to V out, as shown in this formula. Observe this figure. Here we have a high ripple coming from V in. In V out we have a low ripple. So that's what the PSR measures, the ability of a LDO to reject this, this ripple. This block diagram can be used to calculate the PSR of the LDO, where AEA is the gain of the air amplifier, AADD the PSR of the air amplifier, AP is the gate to drain gain of the PMOS transistor, and APDD is the source to drain gain of the PMOS transistor. Considering an ideal reference voltage, we you can get this formula. At low frequencies, we can use those formulas for the PMOS transistor. And putting these formulas into this one, we got this formula for the LDO PSR. To improve the PSR, we can choose the PSR of the air amplifier to be 1 plus 1 over GMPR0P. But this part of the, of the formula is the intrinsic gain of the PMOS transistor, which is a function of the square, square root root of the load current, making the design of the air amplifier hard. But you can also get a good improvement by choosing the PSR of the air amplifier to be approximately 1. Intuitively, we can see that because the ripple of the input uh, voltage goes to the, goes to the gate of the PMOS transistors, and then the VSG voltage of the PMOS transistors is equal to 0. Now I'm going to present the two proposed topologies that applies the feed-forward ripple cancellation technique. They will be called LDO1 and LDO2. For both topologies, M1 to M14 is the air amplifier, MP is the pass transistor, and here M15 and M16 is the feedback network. We can also observe here the compensation capacitor. Both LDO regulators have a three-stage air amplifier. The first stage comprises current source IB1 and transistors M1 to M10, which forms a folded cascode stage. It is responsible for providing high gain and its high output impedance is used to compensate the circuit. Voltages VB1, VB2 and VB3 are provided by a bias circuit. The second stage comprises current source IB2 and transistors M11 and M12. Those components form a wide band amplifier, used to provide gain to minimize the compensation capacitor CC. It needed to be a wide band amplifier 
to push its output pole to high frequencies, not compromising instability. This is done by the low impedance of M12. The third stage of the air amplifier is formed by transistors M13 and M14. It is the voltage subtraction stage responsible for providing the PSR of the air amplifier equals 1. Remember that we need to reproduce the ripple from V in, in the gate of the PMOS transistor, the pass transistor. Then we can imagine this stage as a voltage divider. If resistance RB is, is much larger than resistance RA, then all ripple from V in comes to the gate of the pass transistor. The main difference from LDO2 to LDO1 is that we use any MOS transition as the differential pair. This allows us to apply unit feedback, then this has an advantage of not using a feedback network. Both LDO regulators were designed to provide an output voltage of 1V and a maximum load current of 100mA at a dropout voltage equals 200mV. They were designed using the CMOS 0.18 micrometer technology from TSMC on the Cadence Virtuoso software. To design the air amplifier, all MOSFETs using the design were the standard 1.8 nominal VT transistor. The NMOS transistors box were connected to ground as it should, but in the PMOS transistors, each bulk book was connected to source to avoid body effect. To eliminate inaccuracy due to second order effects caused by transition have no equals width, all EA transistors are parallel combination of a unit size transistor. The unit size transistor parameter were extracted based on the quadratic MOSFET form equation to realize hand calculation. To compensate the circuit, we use metal insulator metal capacitors. In an LDO, air amplifiers using T stage present a problem known as high Q problem which limits the minimal load current. Therefore, we use a 1 mA minimal load current, searching for a 45 degrees phase imaging. The capacitor CC was found by parametric simulation, as we can see in this figure. This is a figure from, from Cadence Virtuoso, where we use the compensation capacitor in here and an inductor to open this, and an ideal inductor to open the circuit. Assuming a worst case scenario, we use an output capacitance of 100 picofarad. Here we can see that the LDO2 capacitor value is almost uh, twice the LDO1. Look into the simulation results of the PSR, we can see that we obtain for both regulators a high DC PSR. The PSR was simulated for minimum and maximum load current. Observe that the results of LDO2 are superior must because of its PSR start to decrease at a, low, at a higher frequency. Three factors contribute to the difference. The air amplifier frequency response. In here you can see the gain of both regulators. Observe that the gain start to decrease in a higher frequency for the LDO2. The feedback network, which decreases the PSR. And the fact that the first stage output of LDO1 replicates the ripple presented in the input voltage, while in the LDO2 it is approximately zero. In this table, a comparison summary is presented, where all the other LDO also had a PSR enhancement. It's important to point out that the results from 3 and 6 are measured, while the other are simulations. RC is the load regulation. Observe that our load regulation is way higher than the others. That's because of the high DC gain of the air amplifiers. RL is the line regulation. Observe that we also have a, a, one of the best. The LDO2 got a min, minus 50, 53 dB at 100 kHz for the PSR. That is also a good, a good result. But we had to use a 17.4 picofarad capacitor, which is the worst of those results. The conclusions are, it can be seen that the RDO regulators designed in this work achieve good PSR performance at low frequency due to the EA high low frequency gain. The topology of choice should be LDO2 due to its higher PSR. The use of the voltage subtractor stage is simple and enhances the design, since it ameliorates the DC PSR without the necessity of secret increasing in area or dropout voltage. Thank you.